Hello there, this is Inayat Meer with a new topic, Windows Server 2016 Containers. We will go over a very high level overview since this is a new topic. I will explain during my video what a container is, why do we use it. So let's go and start with my virtual environment. I will have a one a physical server host one on top of it. I am going to use my virtual environment. So you are looking at my Hyper V manager where you will see my DC and couple of member servers. I am going to show you what is going to happen now. This is my remote server. My host one is a physical is actually on virtual. So this lab is uh, a new lab from Microsoft. So on courtesy of Microsoft, I'm running this lab to show you about Windows containers concept. So I do have this all Windows Server 2016 environment. So NV host 2 is a member server. I am going to use my PowerShell to demonstrate few commands. We need a Docker. Docker is associated with Microsoft at this time. So we easily can go online. I have already configured internet on all of my servers. Typically, I am going to use this current server, which is a virtual on host computer. So NV host 2 uh, is my virtual server. So here I can simply uh, show you uh, in slow motion actually that I am connected to the internet. So this is my yahoo.com ping request which is giving me four replies back. So this proves that I do have internet. On top of it I am going to run few commands from PowerShell. So for your convenience I am going to type those commands on my PowerShell. At the same time, I'm going to type on a separate pop-up window so where you can see easily because I am not using a zoom and pan feature for this recording. So instead, I decided just to use another pop-up or another flying window which will tell you what we are going to perform and that will include all of my commands very clear because in real PowerShell you see some commands when I type minus name it gets grayed out. So you might not be able to see if I don't use my uh, zoom and pan feature. So you are gonna see something like this. So what we are going to do here installing new get package provider and the command is right there. And if you have your Windows Server 2016 configured and you are in the same environment where I am, you can uh, replicate what I have at this time and you can test all of these commands and using a PowerShell. So there are multiple uh, other ways as well. Uh, I will discuss with you in my uh, several of other videos and I will go from very basics to advanced as well. Here I am going to install Docker. So I put both commands, both Docker commands in my this pop-up window, which is flashing to inform you that this is the command you have to type exactly on your PowerShell and make sure you have configured your Windows Server 2016 environment with internet. So I am getting my dynamic IP from my DC. My DC is a domain controller, DNS server, and a DHCP server. So that DHCP server is providing IP address to uh, this client and any client if I want to retrieve IP dynamically, I will get IP from my own internal DHCP server which is on LON-DC1 or which is on my domain controller. So here you are running these commands and we are going to reboot with a PowerShell command 
because after installation configuration is a next part on the way this video recording what you what you see is a short video for you but for me this uh, video was possibly a uh, approximately 3 hours long video but uh, most of the times i paused this video because i don't want you to see all downloading stuff or all unnecessary areas which doesn't mean to you anything simply you got the idea you got the concept and uh, i just can't sit and download my 4 to 10 gigabyte data and let you watch so i made it a very simplified back on my and we host 2 which is running on a physical server as a virtual server as as an assumption on here now again just verify that you do have internet after reboot so i usually go and ping one of the online website whatever is that so here checker search microsoft this will give you a reply only if you have internet available all right search the docker hub for windows container images so you have to follow along exactly and i am adding my commands as well in a separate window so as i said before i am not using my zoom feature so you can also just go and use the docker pull microsoft space forward slash iis colon windows server core command and this is a place where you need to spend a lot of time for waiting for downloading once downloading is done is done i'm sorry when downloading is done you have to wait for extractions and then it will start extracting so both portions downloading is a quite long procedure so i am just adding this small pop up window so i will periodically check this download video will be paused so you do not have to watch all boring stuff ah uh, i would not say or uh, should not say boring stuff this is a very interesting stuff but just watching is boring because when you sit here for 1 hour or 1 hour plus uh, and watching something is being downloaded and i don't think that you will feel is a this is a very pleasure so uh yes uh, on the way while i am talking i will go ahead and pause the video bring it back because while i am talking uh you could think that already not an hour but less than an hour time already passed uh you can track actually timings also from my clock uh if is on you can actually check it it is actually so uh yes i am pausing and going but i am not stopping talking so my video is pause and go and uh, based on that i am communicating with you so as i said so let's uh, talk about containers for a few minutes uh, i am just intentionally leaving this uh, video on on the back end uh, because i want to discuss or talk to you a few things uh, about i t- want to tell you a few things about the container uh, uh, this Uh, windows container was not available in technical preview 1 and 2 but when microsoft released a version of a technical preview of windows server 2016 a third time that is where we have seen this containers option so the introduced in that option so by the way this is my email in case if you want to know very basics about containers just send me an email i do have some uh, documentations for basic start of windows container i could send you, send you or i have a very high level and this is a high level video as well all right so uh, i was talking about a, a windows containers concept which was introduced in a technical preview number 3 from uh, microsoft okay container 
actually provides an operating system level virtualization that allows for multiple isolated applications to be run on a single system. Windows containers provide application isolation through process and namespace isolation technology by sharing a kernel with the container host and all other containers running on the host. So you could get this idea if you have a physical server. On top of it, you have a, a, a virtual environment. So one physical server, for example, has a 10 terabyte hard drive. It got 128 gigabyte memory. It got uh, 32 core processors that is your physical server on top of it you are installing four virtual servers vms virtual machines those virtual machines four machines gonna take four times hard drive space four times processors four times application but container concept actually will squeeze this all so you're gonna have one image of container on top of it you're not going to have four operating system you're going to have one operating system instead of four then you're going to have one application so this is a kind of a concept which i do have explained in my different videos on the other hand you can see on the screen i am running uh, further steps on my uh, containers so this command which i'm running runs IIS image as a background service and configures the network such as port 80 of the container host maps to port 80 of the container so you're gonna see uh, this process the the process which I am running yes definitely it's not gonna be that quick as you see on the screen it will take time from your end so my end is different because I am uh, going pause and go pause and go uh, environment so anyway so uh, i was explaining on to that one so in this way uh, in containers you're not going to have four operating systems you're going to have one image one container and you're going to have one operating system so you can run actually four applications on that one so this is the basic idea so let's move on to back to the container screen where i'm going to show you the ip address the ipv4 address on ethernet adapter named uh, v ethernet n uh, h n s internet nick this is the address of new container so we just had this container and we had an ip address and you will see that when we use browser and access this container we will be able to access uh, through iis and when we stop container we cannot or we would not be able to access the container so every container has an id you will see that id as well so let's go and test my physical server now so through the physical server i am going to use the ip address 172.16.0.162 this should give you an a default iis a service so up and running because container is running so uh, once i go back and uh, stop container yes that is where you're not going to be able to access through this ip so ip config tells you the ip address here you can see both ip addresses here managing iis containers basically that's what we are doing right now so on the top you can see my domain ipv6 address is there ipv4 address is there and this is my ethernet adapter and now you are looking at uh, running containers and this is my container id which will be used in few more steps right now we are viewing running containers on the powershell it gives you the creation time 23 minutes ago and it will tell you the command and the status and the port which was port 80 you saw before so my iis is available so far 
with my 0162 IP address. That's supposed to be because my container is running. So once I go and stop the Docker with IT, this is the same ID what you see on the top left side here. So that ID which I am using right now to stop the Docker, stop the container. So when container is running, we have an access. When container is not running, we do not have an access. So if I go back to my background, where I am running IIS on my host computer, not on the virtual computer, I am running on the host computer where I do have internet access. So I have configured internet on all of these uh, servers. And we need that uh, because we needed to download a couple of gigabytes data. So here you can see we are not able to access IIS page because IIS page is no longer accessible because container is not running so that was the reason so what we actually went through uh, we went through a, a basic concept of the container and you know that we do have a windows container uh, we do have a hyper v containers so here i'm gonna uh, delete the container now uh, windows server 2016 actually offers two different types of containers run times each with a different degrees of application isolation so windows containers offer isolation through namespace and uh, uh, process isolation whereas hyper-v containers isolate uh, each container via a lightweight uh, vm or a virtual machine so windows containers uh, share a kernel with the container host and all the containers running on the host in contrast with Hyper-V containers, the kernel of the uh, container host is not shared with the Hyper-V container. So you have to understand uh, that one. Uh, what this means is that uh, Windows containers are isolated from each other, but they run directly on Windows Server 2016. Hyper-V containers, on the other hand, provide enhanced isolation by running the containers from a Hyper-V VM. So anyways, this was a good overview. I hope you like this video. I'll see you in my next video. Thank you. This is a nightmare.